today's video, I'm doing a slightly different henna hair coloring routine. I'm trying to get away from the orange tint that henna usually gives my hair and what I want to get is a steady dark brown color. Of course, this can be done with indigo, but today I want to test a traditional method used in India with an iron pan. Apparently, if you soak henna in an iron container, it forms a dark pigment and that in turn helps you to cover grays more effectively as well as achieve darker hair color overall. So, a very interesting experiment. I'm using one of my favorites, Jamila Henna from Henna Sook. And as always, I will be adding aloe vera to my henna to make it less drying. Jamila Henna is a wonderful, finely sifted powder that on its own will give you beautiful red tones. I've used it before in my other videos and I absolutely love the ease of the application. If you want your henna applications to be super smooth, go for the finely sifted powders. They are magic. Finely sifted henna powder can form a very smooth base, so it's easier to apply to your hair. The rinsing process would be a bit easier too. It will stick to your hair much better and that in turn will give you a cleaner henna application. None of the scrambles falling off your hair and the mess is really minimal. Okay, as some of you know, I always like to add aloe vera powder to my henna. And this is to prevent henna from being too drying on your hair. I'm adding a generous amount today, about 3 tablespoons. Now, let's talk about my iron container. I have purchased a cast iron pan, so brand new and it doesn't really look polished. That is good, because we don't want it to be polished. It needs to be kind of rough and just pure iron. I have cleaned it with mild detergent before first use and honestly, I don't know if it's going to work from the very first time. To me, it feels like the iron pan needs to be old and kind of scratched up, so it produces a better reaction with henna. What I'm trying to do is to work my henna powder into the iron and kind of scratch it. I would probably need a few goes and a few henna applications in order to see true good results from this method. So I'm just gonna take my time with this step. For today's liquid, I will be using black tea, as it could help achieve darker hair color and boost brown tones, which is exactly what we want. Usually, I would use green tea and even plain water. If you're new to henna, I would suggest starting with plain water and then, as time goes, start trying out other liquids. People use different liquids like black tea or hibiscus tea to help affect the tone of henna, but in reality, the difference that you would get is only very minimal. The temperature of the liquid needs to be warm to hot. It's best not to pour boiling liquid over henna, so let it cool down a bit. Start adding it slowly and don't add too much liquid at one time, as you may end up with a base that is too runny. I like to add an extra ingredient after the dye release process. I will show that to you later. So now, I like to keep my mixture quite thick in consistency. Next, I've done quite a lot of research and look at traditional henna applications. I noticed it's quite common to add an acid component to your henna for this method. I have a choice of lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. I'm really not sure what to go with and I know many would say, no, don't use lemon juice, it will dry out your hair like crazy. But as I'm adding a couple of moisturizing components anyway, I think I really want to try lemon juice this time. Yes, I'm making this decision just for this occasion. You may not be able to see it on camera, but I already started to notice darker pigment around the edges of the pan and some on the bottom as well. 
So fingers crossed it's going to work. Let's give our paste a final mix. Wrap the pan with cling film and leave the henna to release dye and interact with the iron. Ideally, you need to leave this overnight to work, but I only have around 4-5 to five hours. I just hope this will not affect the results that much. So it's time for the unwrapping. I can already see that the paste is a bit darker. I would say much darker than the usual henna in a ceramic bowl. Here is a little comparison video. Usually henna is much more orange and vibrant. Now let me try this with a spatula. Can you see the dark bits? The pigment? But to be honest, I expected more. I think I'm only getting some of the pigmentation. Um, probably in the parts where I really put the effort to scratch the pan. It's still better than nothing, I think. And the mixture is nice and thick right now. Definitely much darker than usual, so that's a plus. Hibiscus gel has become my go-to ingredient to add to my herbal masks for moisture. It's like aloe vera, but even better. I make my hibiscus gel or juice from scratch. You can check out this video on top where I show exactly how I make it and why I use it. It's such an amazing ingredient to help your henna stick better to your hair and provide much needed moisture. As if you use henna frequently, you may notice that it can be drying on the hair. Especially if your hair are naturally already dry like mine. So definitely, do make sure that you add those moisturizing components to balance out the drying effects of henna. Look at this beautiful, smooth paste. This alone is a meditative process on its own. I always look forward to my henna application days, as to me it's like a spa treatment. Okay, we are almost done with the preparation. I'm just going to add a few drops of essential oil for the aromatherapy effect. I'm going for orange essential oil today. It's nice and uplifting and always brings me in a good mood. My hair are freshly washed with just a shampoo and still a bit damp. As always, I'm wearing gloves and applying my henna section by section, starting on the top of my head. The application process usually takes me about 25 to 30 minutes and there is minimal cleanup afterwards. If you are new to henna, you can check out my other henna videos where I talk in a bit more detail about the application and rinsing out process. After I finished applying henna, I rub my hair with clean film so it doesn't dry out and let it sit in my hair for around 5 hours. After which I rinsed out my hair with just water and nothing else this time. I didn't shampoo my hair for the next 48 hours and when I was ready to shampoo, I did an oiling treatment before that, just to make sure that my hair are nicely conditioned. Guys, so let me start by saying that my hair is still, they still have red tone to them. There is very little dark brown seen in the sunlight. And as I suspected, this method didn't quite work the first time round. But also interestingly, when in shade, my hair looked very dark, almost black, which I'm happy about. 
There is not much dryness from that lemon juice and that's good. Overall, my hair are nice and strong as you would expect from henna treatment. But my grays are still a vibrant orange color. I'm not giving up though and will keep using the iron pan to see if I get better results later down the line. So that's the end of this little experiment. I hope you liked it. I have a lot more content like this on my channel, so feel free to subscribe if you enjoy it.